to Horror Rewind. This is Kelly Florence. And I'm Meg. Should we just go, should we should do first names now? Yeah, probably, maybe. Do you guys know who Do you guys are? know our last names yet? <laughs> let's try it. You say, you start and say it, and let's see how it sounds. Hi, this is Kelly. No, I mean say. <laughs> <laughs> what do you this mean? This is not AA. No, 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 say like, this is Horror Rewind. Wait, what do you always say? I say, hello, and welcome to Horror Rewind. This is Kelly. And this is Meg. Does that sound as good? Yeah. I think we can cut off our last, our last names. Okay, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> when you guys tune in next time, we'll see. Okay. How are you? <laughs> good. How are you? You're belligerent like your son today. <laughs> Tell them what my son said to um, me. Well, wait, at which time? <laughs> yeah. He's six, by the way. The, well, he just said, oh no, mom's got another beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he literally said that. By the way, I like... And it's your first beer of the day. Yeah. <laughs> I cracked open one beer, and he said that. <laughs> so, yeah. <sighs> oh, you know what we're talking about this week, everybody? We're talking about another classic, Nightmare on Elm Street. Meg? I feel like we needed to insert a song there, but I don't know a Nightmare on Elm Street oh, song. I don't either. But... Do you have any reoccurring nightmares? <laughs> you know, I think I'm pretty typical in that I have, like, I always seem to have the nightmares of, like, the school ones, where I'm like, you know, I'm late for class, I can't find my class, I I didn't realize there was a test, I didn't realize the whole semester there was a class, and it's, like, the last day, and I'm finally yes. showing up, like, those kinds of dreams. I, I don't have, know why. I have that one, too, and it's always a math class, because I'm not a skilled mathematician, oh, and so it's like the last day of class, and I've missed the whole semester, and I have oh, to go no. to this math class. That's always bad. Yeah. My other reoccurring dream is theater-related, though, oh. and I think it, it translates if you've been in theater. It's opening night of a play, and I don't even know. I haven't mm. even looked at the script, oh, and we're opening. Oh, no, that's stressful. Yeah, that's always really bad, because it's like, I don't know my lines. I haven't even looked at the script. Of course, that's never happened in real life, but it's just, I think it's along the same themes of not feeling prepared and yeah I get lost a lot like sometimes I'm in a, a school and it's like I just I can't find my classroom or I've been in malls before and like I just can't find my way out and they're like very they're like you know labyrinth what is it labyrinthine hmm. is that how you yeah. say it yeah um yeah so it's it's strange. We are. Oh, we want to hear your nightmares, people. Yeah, what are your reoccurring nightmares? We will pretend like we know what they mean, and we'll tell you what it says about you. Oh, well, there goes my them. cell phone again. Literally, guys, every time. <laughs> every time I think I'm going to shut my cell phone thingy off, and I don't. Okay, there. It's off now. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, well, what would Freud say about our nightmares? Why do oh. we have these nightmares about school, even though we're not in high school or college anymore? Yeah, and people who were homeschooled, do you have the same nightmare? <gasps> Good question! Oh my gosh! Because, you know, do you, I mean, do you feel like, oh, I was supposed to get this, this packet done, or, or do whatever? They have, but do they have nightmares, like, in schools? I don't would that know. make any sense? Probably it's not. All, well, and it would all be like Freddy Krueger related, right? Ooh, yeah. So we, yeah, I want to know. Oh, speaking of which, um, they uh, in the movie like people have all uh, multiple people have the same dream. That would be creepy too. Have you ever dreamt the same sort of thing as someone else? You know. <laughs> okay, so I lied one time to make it seem like I did uh -huh. to scare my brother because he. <laughs> And this is going to sound awful. My brother's adopted, and he said he had a dream about his adoptive mother. Now I sound terrible. And he was like, he described her and everything. I'm like, oh, my God. I was very no. young. I was very young. And I was like, oh, my God, I had the same dream. And I remember he just screamed. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, we shared the dream. Okay, but he picked on me, guys. So All right. He deserved it. But I think I only pretended that one time. I don't think I've ever. That would freak me out. Yeah. Has that ever happened to you? No, no, but watching this movie, I was thinking how creepy yeah, it would be. Yeah, that would be scary if somebody was like, oh, I'm having a dream about this, and then you're like, oh my god. Yeah. Me too. Weird. Oh, so you said you had a um, a Nightmare on Elm Street story? Oh, it's one, of, it's, one of my, it's one of my half stories again. Basically, I, when I was in first grade, I lived in Ohio, which is where Nightmare on Elm Street takes place. 
and the boy across the street, and I did not live on Elm Street, but the boy across the street from me, he was an older brother of my friend. It was around Halloween, and the the local, um, you know, Halloween house. What do you call those? Haunted, Haunted house. house. <laughs> oh, my God. It's only How my career. Years? How many beers have you Yeah, had? I guess you can see why my son said A that. Halloween house? A Halloween house. <laughs> of the word haunted <laughs> and I host a horror podcast anyway oh, yeah um classic anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um and then I just spend the whole time calling him Eddie Krueger <laughs> um anyway uh the the so this older brother again you know liking to pick on us he said he said when you guys go down to the local Halloween house <laughs> That's my new favorite thing. He's like, Freddy Krueger is going to be there. And I'm like, who is Freddy Krueger? I didn't know. I was six. I had no clue. And he's like, he described him in full, like, grotesque detail. And he's like, he's going to be there. And sure enough, I got there and I was in line with my dad and I was so excited to go through the Halloween house. Um, and uh, and then Freddy Krueger came out and was out, even like when you're waiting in line, he came out to see people as they were waiting in line. And that was, I think... The first time I was really, really scared by something like that. Like, you know, we've said, both of us, we're pretty desensitized and we watched a lot of horror movies when we were kids. But I was still pretty young. I was only six. And that I remember to this day, just just seeing Freddy Krueger and the way he was described. And it was scary. Oh. He, I mean, he looks creepy. Yeah, yeah, he does. I pulled a similar thing except it was it was fake so it was like fake like with your brother <laughs> i told somebody at camp that freddy krueger i saw freddy krueger outside the window and they didn't know who he was so i described him and i'm like he was looking <laughs> oh like gosh. this with his hand up with the, the knives and they were freaked out so so you would have done that to me <laughs> i guess so i'm sorry no it's okay but yeah it's it's creepy. And, and, oh, you were mentioning uh, waiting in line for the Halloween house. <laughs> when I went through a haunt, there was, it was like, I was like in seventh grade, though, so it wasn't scary. But there was a guy dressed as Leatherface with a, a chainsaw. You know, they took the chain off oh, or whatever right. so it was safe. Yeah. But he was going and, like, terrorizing people in the line. And I was thinking, that'd be pretty scary for a little kid. Well, it's funny you mention that because my... We have a Halloween party every year for children. And last year, they there were complaints that our... our I'll call it a haunted house now, was not scary enough, so Luke is getting together a leather face oh, good. thing. Yeah. And it's for children, and we're going to let them choose if they want to be just slightly scared or really scared, and then the older kids will do that. Now, the I expected face. you to say you got complaints that it was too scary, so... You know, it went both ways. We had little kids who were like, no, that was too much, and then, you know, the older, like, 10, 11-year-olds were like, Ugh. Uh, you know, yeah. so Luke's like, that's not going to happen this year. Yeah. So we're going to go all out this year. Okay, good. And also another side note, which also is related to my brother, he got a job working at a <laughs> at a Halloween house, and it was the, remember, okay, you know the one, Duluth, that's on the ship? Yeah. Were you, no, you weren't with me. I think this is before I met you. I went through the haunted house, and it's, you know, you're like on this big, huge barge or whatever it is, and I hear, Megan, oh. Megan. And it was my brother. Nice. So that's kind of cool if you know somebody there and yeah. they say your name. And that's scary. I knew it was him, though. <laughs> so I'm going to give you a little background on Nightmare on Elm Street. Okay. It was released in 1984. Wes Craven Ooh. wrote and directed it. It came out on VHS already in 1985. I know sometimes people are like, uh, movies didn't need to come out that fast. But, <laughs> well, but now, said, yeah, now, now they, they come out like three months later. Is, yeah. But this was within a year. I think that's... Was that, good. so was that fast back at that I mean, time? I feel like that's fast, okay. but. Okay, I don't know. I'm going to start looking that up more you because know, I'm curious. You know, I was born in 1984, so I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, there's a line in the movie that says, oh, oh my God, I feel like I, I, feel, I, look, I look 20. I look 20. She says that she looks in the mirror. Because she's 15, and um, she's like, I aged five years Oh, my gosh. Night. How much would you love to look in the mirror and say, oh, God, I look 20? <laughs> Um, it had a budget of $1.8 million, and the box office took in $25.5 million. It's 94% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, Whoa. and this is Johnny Depp's premiere movie. It did say introducing Johnny Depp. Yeah. How, how do we feel about Johnny Depp today? 
people. Well, I mean, I've I've gone the roller coaster with Johnny Depp, and I'm not I'm off the coaster now. I feel like I have a lot of love for Johnny Depp. He's in some of my favorite movies. I'm a big Tim Burton fan, so I love him in Ed Wood and Edward Scissorhands and um, Sleepy Hollow. And I mean, he's in so many good things, and he's so good in them. But then it's like you hear these things, and it's hard to. Um, I call it the Woody Allen effect. Where it's like, I also like Woody Allen movies, but how do you... Separate the man from the art. How do you separate the man from the art? Is that something that we should do as viewers? I don't know. I think it's a tough one. And I I also have fallen off the Johnny Depp roller coaster because I don't know that I love his choices as of late. As of late, no. I have not seen a good Johnny Depp movie in... I liked, um... Is it... Yeah. Yeah, Charlie the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. Uh, I like that one. I feel but like that's a the long last. Time ago. That was the last like Johnny Depp movie that I was like, oh, that was good. And now he's gonna be in the Harry Potter world, and oh, I just right. don't. Yeah. I don't love that. Yeah. <clears throat> but all right, anyway. let's talk about this movie. Okay. All right. I remember a friend saying to me that Freddy Krueger was a cheater, and he wasn't like a good villain because he just gets people in their dreams, but he actually kills them. Like they actually die. So is, what do you think? Is that cheating? I don't. I don't think that's cheating. I mean, that's just saying, I think that, you know, some people like Supernatural and some people don't. Uh, I like Supernatural, so it doesn't bother me that a a killer uses Supernatural ways to kill people. Um, It's just like we were talking about with Evil Dead, you have this formidable foe, and I I think some people just like to live in the world of, you know, your Friday the 13th type uh, movies, and that's good too, I love those too, but I don't think it's cheating. I mean... He's just able to do that. If Jason yeah. could do that, he would do it too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you notice the music in this movie is very 80s? Yeah. When we were talking about Friday the 13th last week, y- you had mentioned just how fitting the score oh, yeah. was. Yes. The music is not the greatest in this. I it's know. It kind of dates and it. Kind of pulls which you is, the moment. Which is too bad because mm-hmm. I feel like there's a lot of really solid things about the movie and, and that music kind of pulls me out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, something I noticed. They're in English class, and they're studying Hamlet. And did you notice that right when they start talking about Hamlet, or the kid starts reading from Hamlet, is when she has, Nancy, has her first vision of Tina as a ghost. And so oh, it's like Hamlet's like father Hamlet. is a ghost. Ooh. Yeah. And then she's having... And Whoa, I, way, to, way to dig there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I never made that connection um, you know, but when I watched this movie before, but now since I saw Benedict Cumberbatch and Hamlet, <laughs> <laughs> it's like more in my oh, forefront of my she's mind. She's really Shakespearean, guys. It's it's every yeah. other reference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I did not notice that. Um, but that's really cool. What did you think about Tina's death? Oh, okay. So here's what I th- I think. What I, what kind of I noticed in the beginning that kind of rubbed me the wrong way was I felt like it was uh, relying a little bit more on stereotypes of women than um, some previous movies we've been watching, and I felt like Nancy and Tina, and I'm assuming Tina's the, be- the best friend, right? Yeah. Okay. I felt like it was like good girl role and quote unquote slut role, and right. I felt like there wasn't, and of course Tina didn't have much time to show us much else but I just felt like they were a little I don't know it was just like Nancy was too good to be true she's literally clutching a crucifix and then Tina who's just like what what people would consider not good or, or something like right. that and so I just kind of felt like we didn't really get to see it the development the the good thing is through the movie you get to see the development of Nancy and boy does she have some great lines oh. and she really um she kind of gets to get out of that that good girl role and she but she has some great like swears that she does but I just felt like Tina never really she was very like flat we didn't really get to see her like you know but that's just it's a time thing I guess they had to kill her in the beginning I guess you know I haven't rewatched this movie I don't think ever as an adult and so it was Mm -hmm. fun to go back and I I underappreciated or didn't remember Nancy and her character and how Mm -hmm. she really is the protagonist throughout the whole thing and she's strong and she she does grow and change. I'm finding from this rewatch, now that we're however many weeks into this, that there are stronger and better roles for women than I thought initially there were. Yeah, me too. Um, I'm like, wow, no wonder I like horror movies. This, you know, because there's so many movies, you know, a lot of people like westerns or gangster movies, and for me, those are always uh, about men and men's problems, and of course I love movies that have men in them, <laughs> but I 
I'm starting to realize like horror really is a woman's genre in many ways. Yeah. There's you know? there's always I mean there's usually women in the horror movies and mm-hmm. and then a lot of times strong women, which yeah. is awesome. Yeah, I can see why I gravitated toward this genre for sure. Uh the when Nancy's in the bathtub and that glove comes up, <laughs> it's so creepy. It's so good. It's, it's so iconic. It's so good. Yeah, it's very iconic and yeah, and I think they they do a good job in this movie of like setting up what can happen in this world and they they do a very good job when they show Freddy the first time like showing okay he can't get hurt very easily right. you know also i feel like he enjoys being a villain more than anyone have you oh, seen a yeah. villain like that enjoys that that no. much i mean he's not he's not maybe i mean maybe he is doing it out of anger but you don't see him be angry you he's, just see him like ha ha oh my god he's so full of glee he's i wrote that he's cheeky he's just very yeah. cheeky and like he loves this yeah and I guess it's because, like, when he was alive, he was killing kids, and now he's doing what he loves. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good way to look at it. Oh, you know, so Johnny Depp, and you you mentioned Edward Scissorhands. I feel like Edward Scissorhands oh, yeah. is the opposite of Freddy Krueger. Oh, yeah. In a lot of ways, and it's funny because I feel like someone saw Nightmare on Elm Street and was like, aw, the Scissorhand people need a oh. movie to represent them in <laughs> yeah, a different light. Yeah, this is not fair. <laughs> And so they made Edward sort of representation yeah. of this. <laughs> that's how I felt. It's like, oh, we got to show Aww. them what Scissorhand people really are like. I feel like that's a fanfic. Oh, Freddy Krueger and Edward Scissorhands, um, cousins, brothers, oh, lovers, lovers. <laughs> yeah, I did say fanfic. <laughs> okay, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> well, somebody write that, or it yeah. probably exists. It probably what exists. Are we kidding? Yeah, we'll Google it later. Did you notice Evil Dead on the TV? I did. We love to see little references like that. It was cool. I was, uh, I mentioned this last month, but uh, I was watching Splash. I wasn't actually watching it. It was on TV. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> you're so full of shit. Yeah. Just say you're watching it. And Evil Dead, the movie, at, was playing at a movie theater in the background. That's so, really cool. you know, random Tom Hanks. Yeah. The, okay, so was Vienna watching Splash? Because she, like, I, when you, when you said this before, I'm like, maybe Vienna was watching because she likes sharks. I realize that yeah. it's not a shark movie. But it is underwater it and is, yeah. mermaid, yeah. Okay. Thought so. Okay, I love that, I do love Tina's death sequence, and she's going up on the ceiling. That's that was pretty very, cool. Very cool and very yeah. creepy, because especially... You don't, I mean, you think, well, if it's happening in a nightmare, it's not real. You just have to wake up. Yeah. But it proves that, oh, my God, like, yeah. no, you're sleeping and you can't get away. Yeah, which, and is there anything worse than either needing to fall asleep, and of course you can't fall asleep, or in this movie we see her forcing herself awake? Oh. That is the worst! Yeah. When you have to feel like you have to be awake for, like, extended periods of time, and then you, you can't help it. Your body just starts yeah. shutting down, you know? She was, you know, her mom took away the coffee, and then she brought out the secret coffee pot. I felt like if this, if they made a remake now, well, I know there was a remake, but I feel like current era, they would be drinking Red Bull, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for you sure. would get the coffee pot out. Did you see the remake? I did. Yeah, I did, too. It was all right. Yeah. I think it was fine. Uh, by the way, Nancy's mom is my hero. Oh, because she, she's drinking out of a yeah. bottle of liquor? <laughs> she reacted, I feel like, how an actual person would react to this, which is, like, she was laying in her bed in the middle of the day in her pajamas, like, with a bottle of alcohol. <laughs> I feel like that's how people... she barred the windows. She and... barred the windows, yeah. I feel like that's how people would actually react to something like this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, that's a real human reaction. It's like, what can I do and what could possibly help? Yeah. Yeah, the mom character was was good. In the school, there's the the body bag sequence. Oh yeah, that's so good I with the that body was cool. being dragged through. Yeah, that, that was, was amazing. Neat. I did not remember that in my mind. Like that me was um, it stood out to me as a really good sequence. Also, when I was speaking of her trying to stay awake, and then she goes to sleep and she tells Johnny Depp, like you have to wake me up, and he had one job, and <laughs> she even kind of wakes up and, and wakes up and says that, like <laughs> I asked you to do this one thing. Yeah. And he falls asleep. It's like, can you trust anybody? Would you trust no. anybody? What, to keep me to, awake? Yeah, or, or to, to, wake, stay awake? to stay awake? See, Would I... Would your husband be able to stay awake? No. I have this thing. It's kind of like driving. Like, mm-hmm. I don't like to drive um, overnight because somebody's awake and you're, somebody's supposed to stay awake with them. Yeah. But people don't. And no. then you end up being a sleepy driver. So it's yeah. not okay. No, I... No. I would not trust anyone I know 
to actually stay awake. Oh, I don't know. This is this is random, but I just had a memory of it. Speaking of being awake or asleep, I went to this like Bible camp thing with a friend in elementary, and we had a counselor. And this was this was the only week I went there, and I never went back. <laughs> there was a counselor who slept with her eyes open. <gasps> And so you would see her, and she, it would look like she was staring at you, and her eyes were just open, but she was sleeping. Oh. It was creepy! Like, how open? Like, open, open. Like, open, open? Like, open. Oh my gosh! Like, all Kelly's the way open. Kelly's doing it right now, <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> I, I mean, oh. I, don't even, I don't even get it. That doesn't seem... I feel like you get dry eyes. <laughs> I, well, yeah. That doesn't seem good for your body. Like, Ew! Yeah, so... That's really gross. I don't know. Just a random sleep habit. Do you sleep with your eyes open? Let us know. Yeah, I thought you were asking me. (laughs) Okay, yeah. We should have people send pictures in of people sleeping with their eyes open. (laughs) That's a horror movie. Oh, can I tell a scary story about yeah. sleepwalking? Because your husband sleepwalks. Uh, yes. He, I'm going to tell, I shouldn't tell this story. You're the no, one who no, was no. there. No, no, Wait, which one are you thinking of? Of when he looked in, when he was looking in the mirror, like back oh. at you? Oh, yeah. Well, this was, he doesn't sleep. although he does sleep talk, but he doesn't sleepwalk much anymore. But yeah, this was back when we were like first dating and we were teenagers. And what did he do? I don't remember. Well, okay, so he had his back to you. You were sleeping. Oh, yeah. And okay. he had his back to you and he was looking in a mirror. But you know how you look in a mirror and you're actually and looking then, back at the person yeah. behind you. And Meg turned on the light and That's said, what right. are you doing? And he said in a strange That's voice, right. turn off the light. Turn off the light. And my husband's very sweet and would never be like, turn off the light in there, his But like life. looking, but his back is to you and yeah. looking through the mirror. Like that's yeah. creepy. That and, really and you know creepy. they're sleepwalking. Yeah. Yes. I was just watching a forensic files about a guy who claim that he was sleepwalking when he stabbed his wife like 40 sometimes and he almost got away with it but they they figured out he wasn't sleepwalking oh my god! but like people have gotten away with murder because they said they were sleepwalking well and they're sleep eaters yeah <laughs> <laughs> which i'm more likely to do but i but i don't sleep eat no i had a friend tell me that she woke up in a pile of hard uh taco shells and her boyfriend had eaten those well he was he brought them back to oh, bed okay <laughs> And he I thought had, he like, carried her somewhere to a Taco <laughs> Bell or something. No. <laughs> Where would you want <laughs> to be carried to when you're asleep and wake up? Dairy Queen? <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. One thing I did Google, and I meant to Google this when we were watching Poltergeist, and it happens in Evil Dead, is the white hair. Because it oh, happens right. to Nancy in this, too. So and I did look Twin this Peaks. up. And it happens in Twin Peaks. So I looked it up, and it seems like something that's not really proven to be a thing. But they said that one person that is said in lore to it, it have happened to is Marie Antoinette, which I thought oh. was cool. And that she had a white, she woke up with a white streak in her hair from some trauma or something like that. Anyway, that's all I really found on it. I'd love to know, too, if that's ever actually happened to somebody. Right, the stress or the fear of yeah. something turning your hair white. Yeah. Okay, Johnny Depp's death. Oh, yeah. It kind of made me think of Kevin Bacon's death in Friday the 13th, because they both get grabbed from under the bed. Yes. Ironic, because they're the both the people who had the best careers yeah. out of those movies, but, you know, right? Yeah, yeah. It was from under the bed. And then what do you think? Did it make you think of, like, a Sam Raimi Evil Dead sort of thing with all the blood With after? the blood gushing, definitely. It was Evil Dead-esque. Um, and I that is one thing that has stuck in my mind. There's certain images and moments from movies that stick in your mind. And I didn't re- remember it was Johnny Depp's character, but the guy getting sucked into the bed. That's scary because you feel yeah. somehow we feel safe in bed. Yes! And then here's Kevin Bacon last week getting stabbed from underneath and he's yeah. getting sucked in and there's nothing you can do about it. I never really thought of it that way but like yeah when you're laying on your bed like something's stabbing you from under or grabbing you. You feel like That's well as long cool. as I don't like lean over and look under the bed I'm fine right. or if I don't have my leg hanging out. <laughs> yeah. But really we're not safe yeah. anywhere. Oh my god. Okay the tongue phone. <laughs> It's a surreal type horror. It's almost like, I don't know what to compare it to, but it's like a surreal, like almost funny. Yeah. 
Well, it kind of makes me think a little bit of like a Beetlejuice type humor. Yes. Or something. So Freddy Krueger, uh, Nancy's on the phone, and then Freddy Krueger comes out. His tongue comes out of the phone and tries to kiss her. He's like, "Your yeah. boyfriend's dead. I'll be your boyfriend now." Uh, yeah. So he's a, he's a little he's a little rapey. Yeah. Which I mean is the least of his issues. What do you, what did you think in the beginning when his arms were all long? Uh, a Beetlejuice esque again. Yeah, that was kind of. I mean, I know that that Beetlejuice is post this yeah. movie, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That, and it looked okay. I think most things in this movie look yeah. pretty good. Some things, I mean, I think the thought of him is scarier than him the, actually. The actual him. Because he's yeah. so, he's, like you said, he's cheeky and he's, he's mm-hmm. you know, funny. And obviously if he was coming after to kill me, I wouldn't be like, you're a funny guy. <laughs> you're so but, funny. But I'm not, I, I don't I feel know what fear you're saying. of him. I know what you're saying. Um... I felt fear when I was watching Friday the 13th. I didn't feel fear when I was watching yeah. this movie. Yeah. And I'm just comparing the two because they're both, well, I watched them back to back, but also they're they're both iconic horror movies yeah. of the 80s. And I, I liked Nightmare on Elm Street. I think it was a good movie, but I didn't get the same feelings out of it. Oh, yeah. Is that how you felt? Yeah. Or, yeah, I okay. I agree, and I I definitely didn't remember it as well yeah. as I maybe thought I did. I don't know. I had yeah. it wasn't one that I rewatched a lot. See, for me, I didn't see it until I was probably I want to say sixteen, seventeen. Oh, okay. I was like, okay, I've never seen Nightmare on Elm Street. This is ridiculous. Wow. Okay. I just it wasn't like a conscious thing. I mean, maybe it was because that little <laughs> that boy scared me when yeah. I was a little kid, but I don't think so. I just. Um, I knew who Freddy Krueger was, and but I had just never seen the movie, and I was like, okay, it's time now. But I think I only saw it that one time, maybe once more after that. I know. So I'm I not. Know. I'm definitely not a Nightmare on Elm Street, um, you know, expert. I uh, and neither am I. And how many sequels are there? Did you look it up? I didn't look it up. But there's sequels. Um, I've seen. I yeah, there are sequels, and I've seen the one. Have you seen the meta one, where? Heather Langenkamp plays herself. Oh, no. That one's actually kind of cool because she's the actress and then she starts getting, oh, like hunted by Freddy Krueger. And it's kind of cool. cool. So it's kind of like. And there's Freddy versus Jason, too, of course. Oh, right. Yes. Okay. Freddy versus Jason. Who do you. Who who is your man in that? I would. I would root for Jason. Yeah, me too, probably. I'm sorry. Sorry, Sorry, Freddy Krueger. <laughs> Sorry. We love you too, Freddy. Um, w- one of my favorite, I wrote it down, it was such a good line, um, is she's trying to get the attention of the dumb cop across the street, and she's like, get my dad, you asshole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. She had some yeah. really good, and she even took her mom's um, bottled alcohol and threw it on the ground and said, like, screw you or something. Yeah. She had some good, like, I felt like it was, her character got to actually have an, a character arc, which doesn't always happen in horror movies. True. So... And I she had some that. clever ways to try to catch Freddy, but of course, he outsmarts them or uh, gets away at the end because it's all in the dream. So what did you think about the end? It's not fair. Yeah. I mean, it's not a happy ending. and I mean, not that we need a happy ending in a horror movie, but at least give us a real ending. I don't know. Yeah, I, I kind of liked it because I kind of like ambiguous endings where you don't really know, like if everybody's okay or what happened. I sort I kind of like a, a hanging chat ending. Okay. Personally. But I, I understand though. Okay, so did it live up to your memories? No, I because I guess since the last time I watched this movie, like I I guess I used to be think Freddy was much scarier or creepier than he actually is, so no. Okay, so when you were watching it, you were like, I, I feel, I don't feel scared. Yeah, or, no, okay. I, I guess I was appreciating the other facets of him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the multifaceted nature of Freddy, Freddy Krueger, child killer. Okay, uh, um. Oh, wait, what, did they, did they allude to him being a pedophile in this movie? Because I know they no, did in the remake. No, but, yeah, because I was like, why do I feel like Freddy Krueger's a pedo? Is like what, because that is always kind of in my mind, is that he's a pedophile. And I don't know if it's because I saw it in the remake, or just because when you say a child killer, I mean, yeah. let's be honest, if somebody's a child That's killer, weird. I mean, it's it's probably because of that reason. But anyway, yeah. Um, it actually kind of made me think of like a warped sort of 
backstory version of uh, Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. I know he, I know he wasn't a pedophile, but it kind of, it was like this sort of revenge tale as well. But in this one, Freddy is evil, right? And he's so you're using not rooting it for, for him. You're not rooting for him, and and yeah, he's using his supernatural abilities for for bad. But it was like Dark Knight of the Scarecrow was also supernatural, but he was using it to get rid of the trash. Yeah. Did any scene stand out to you in the rewatch? <clears throat> the the body bag being dragged through the school. I really appreciated that scene, and that was yeah, good. Yeah, I liked when, like, the legs went up, and then you couldn't yes. see it. And, and somebody like, was dragging. Yeah, yeah that very was cool. good. Was there anything you didn't remember? I guess I didn't remember the mother character okay. much at all, and I, I also didn't remember how quickly Tina died, I guess. I mean, it, it, that's gets the whole story going, but um, it happened pretty pretty fast. Okay, um, does it pass the Bechdel test? Yes, I think it does. I mean, yeah. she and her yeah. mom talk, and yeah. Yeah, for Tina sure. and... Is yeah. it, was it scary at the time, and is it scary now? I used to be scared of Freddy Krueger. I mean, I used to think he was creepy, but no, I don't, I don't, I don't think you it's just scary. Didn't feel... Do you it's think a... it's scary? No, and I feel like it's one of those sort of, some things you can show, and it's still just really scary, and some things you show, and it just isn't, and I feel like... I don't know, I'm trying to compare it to something, to another killer, but it just sort of loses its edge when you actually see so much of his face, and like, I don't know, yeah. it's almost like if it was in the shadows or something, it would be scarier. I don't I know. know. And I, but, at the same time, what did I complain about the entire time we were talking about Dark Knight of the Scarecrow? I wanted more Scarecrow action in yeah. my face. So it's like, nobody you, <laughs> you want can't a happy win. medium? <laughs> yeah, it's that happy medium or something. I don't know. You know, I uh, somebody recently said to me that they were the most scared of Freddy Krueger because the other people you could probably defeat, but if you fall asleep, you can't like, you that's can't defeat true. him. And and I don't know, that that's scary to them, but that's not scary to me. I don't know. Okay. But but then again, I have not watched that Night Terror movie about like sleep paralysis. Oh yeah, maybe so we need to watch that. Then we'll be we'll be looking at this in a new light. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's almost maybe it's like he's so formidable that you can't even be scared because what are you going to do anyway? Yeah, <laughs> like it's, there is no chance to escape him. Right. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Hmm. Uh, yeah. All right. Let us know. What are you afraid afraid of Freddy Krueger? Yeah. Hi, horror friends. Lisa here with my friend, Kelly. Hi. <laughs> I'm so lucky she's here again, and I'm so thrilled that she helped me understand what this movie was about because, as you said, <laughs> I don't think she could handle it. So we, I just told her everything about it, and I said it takes place in Ohio, and she went to grad school in Ohio, so turns out I spent three years there. Oh, you. Oh, yeah. Bobcats, meow, paws and claws, <laughs> tantrum 15, shout out. <laughs> so that was my launching off. And she also informed me that they, you know, obviously in the movie, you need to stay awake because you can't fall asleep, otherwise Freddy will get you. So you need to stay awake, and how do you do that? How do they do it in the movie? With coffee. Coffee. So what do we have that's coffee like for alcohol? Our Kahlua friend that we built our bar with. So. Let's talk about 7, 8, We're Gonna Stay Up Late, which is what I'd like to call this drink. <laughs> Get ready, because it might not be the coffee, but all of the sugar that is going to keep you up and through this movie, awake through this movie. So you will need Kahlua, you will need peanut butter, you will need chocolate sprinkles. Are you excited yet? You should be. You will need milk and you will need Bosco's chocolate syrup. Remember, we just keep coming back to this. <laughs> Or any form of chocolate milk, like uh, chocolate milk, hot chocolate, whatever you need to make that with, however you like to make it, do you. So we're going to start by decorating our glass, because you know. Now this peanut butter and chocolate, this is a Buckeye? Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> so this was actually the first thing I thought of when I was doing some research about this film and that it's set in Ohio, and an Ohio staple candy even though it's not from my school but it's the buckeye which is a peanut butter fudge dipped in chocolate <laughs> yeah that's perfect so we're gonna do that but on our cup you're gonna want to use something that can hold hot liquids like a coffee cup and grab a spoon and paint on peanut butter um, 
Don't need a really thick coat, but just a nice smooth layer all the way around. This is going to be our peanut butter fudge for our little Buckeye Awake project. Okay, great. So once we have this beautiful peanut butter coated rim, we're going into the chocolate sprinkles and just plop it in there. Get a nice coat around. Know that because this is going to be hot liquid coming in here, you don't want to fill it all the way to the top because this will start to melt in, which is delicious as we've learned but also super messy. We're going to take this is an easy one, friends, just a single ounce and a half pour of Kahlua. We'll put that in the cup first. And then our hot chocolate, however you've chosen to make it, we used two tablespoons of Bosco's and about a cup of milk. Heated it up, put it in this fun little Petri thing. We've got a cocktail, friends. And it smells delicious. Oh, the smell of Kahlua. Let me join you, Kelly, let's see. Okay, cheers. Cheers. Oh. I'm just gonna barely. <laughs> All right, it's time for our fast forward segment. Meg, what are you talking to us about this week? Okay, so the other day I got to have like a whole day. It was like eight hours, maybe even 10 hours to myself. What? It was amazing. Anybody out there with small children will understand. And so I watched a bunch of new horror movies. Excellent. So I'm going to talk about one of them today, and I was so excited to see this was on Netflix because I had heard about it, and I wanted to check it out. Um, it's called XX. Oh. So you haven't seen it? No. Okay, the reason I wanted to watch it is because it's an anthology movie. It's four short movies, and they're all directed by women and about women. A uh, horror. When did this come out? Uh, last year, I think. The end of last year. One of the directors, um, Karen Kusama, I think her last name is, um, she directed The Invitation. Oh, yeah, I like yeah. that movie. And one of the other directors is um, Annie Clark, who is St. Vincent, the... Um, the singer? The singer. Okay, yeah. cool. So, and there's a couple people um, in, the, in it you might know. Um, Melanie Linsky is in one. Um, I'm trying to think who else. There's a couple other people, but no, no huge stars. But anyway, I was excited to check it out because I was like, okay, this... First of all, I'm a big fan of anthology series like Twilight Zone, Tales from the Dark Side, all of that. And also, I'm a short story writer. I just really like the short form, especially in horror, too. I just think you can it tell... It can be done well. It, it can be done well. And I just think there's something to be said about kind of getting right into the heart of the matter and using what limited time you have to create a good story. So um, the only thing is, before I watched it, I saw bad reviews for it. So I was just like, oh, that kind of bummed me out a little, but it did not slow me down. I was like, I, I want to watch this. So um, there's four little short movies in it. Um, the first one is about, oh, the first one is a, about a family, and I won't, I won't give too much away, but it's about a little boy in the family who stops eating all of a sudden, and he just won't eat any food at all, like, to the point where he, they take him to the doctor, and then something, and then he whispers in his little, in his oh, sister's ear something, no. and she won't eat anything <gasps> anymore. This is creepy. Yeah. I'm already creeped out. Yeah. Ooh. And then they whisper something to their dad, and he won't eat what? food anymore, and it's the mom left. So that's all I'm going to say, but I, yeah, I have chills right now. So that, that was probably the one with the best hook and the best, like, whoa, what is going on? So that was cool. Um, the second one was a little more, it was called The Birthday Party, and it, that one was kind of a little more, like, funny less horror. The third one that I really uh, liked, I probably liked it the most, was, um, and I think it was called Don't Fall, and it was about a group of campers, like, they, they were adults, like, I think two couples, and it starred um, the woman from San Junipero, the redheaded one, I think. She is also in The Martian, and she's in... Oh, I don't remember her. From she's, that. like, one of the programmers. Oh, and okay. And she, like, brings the info in. And then, oh, something else. Okay. I feel like she's in, yeah, something else sci-fi. Okay, okay. Anyway. So, anyway, um, 
Yeah, that one is about, that one's kind of the more sort of typical horror where there's like a creature type thing. That was good. And then the last one is about a mother and a son, and the son is up to some weird stuff. I won't say too much, but I would recommend it. Um, I wouldn't say that it's the most amazing movie I've ever seen or anything like that, but um, what I like about anthology movies, I don't know, do you like those? I do, yeah. Yeah. Is there's kind of something for everyone. Yeah. And I don't know, there's just something to me intriguing about a little 20 minute horror movie, I think. Well, speaking of Black Mirror, it's. Is that what we were talking about? Yeah, yeah, I said the San Junipero yeah. episode. I should have said of Black Mirror. <laughs> what I, it's, it reminds me of Black Mirror that, you know, every episode, they have this sort of reoccurring theme, mm-hmm. but you can get a different view of the world or a different view yeah. of a, a scary thing or, or horror in a different light. I, I like that. Yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of why I like Twilight Zone and, and Black Mirror and things like that, because I don't know, it's like they get to kind of play with these worlds. Like, just think of, like, the one with Bryce Dallas Howard, you know? I love that That world, um, if anybody knows what I'm talking about. Um, You can't, you could make a whole TV show about that, but sometimes you just need one episode to just show that world. So, anyway, I really liked XX. I wouldn't say it was, again, one of my favorite horror movies of the year or anything like that, but it was a solid movie, I mean, it's on Netflix, and um, you could even just watch one of them if one of them sounds interesting to you. Which one of the four, four sounds Well, the first one sounds most interesting, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. I think I'll appreciate all of them. Yes. We need to rank these things for the week, and I was thinking we could rank them on Johnny Depp cutoff tops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he had such a short one. He had a crop top. He had a crop he top had, on. His little belly button was yeah. sticking out. Oh, so cute. <laughs> Since we uh, did Kevin Bacon Speedos last yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. I say objectify men as much as we possibly can. <laughs> so from zero to you hated it to ten being it's a perfect movie, what do you rank Nightmare on Elm Street of Johnny Depp crop tops? I'm going to give it six and a half. And I say half because it's a crop top. Six and a half <laughs> Johnny Depp crop tops. <laughs> Well, I was going to give it a six, but I've got to give it a six and a half <laughs> okay. now because of the crop top. Yeah, that brings it up. I, to... I feel like people are going to be mad at us. But, you know. That we don't love it as much as other. You guys, I'm sorry. No, I, I guess it just wasn't my jam. It I don't just know. isn't my jam either. And I feel, like, guilty. Like, I feel like a bad horror fan. I think it's okay. We don't have to love everything equally. No, I know. As but... horror fans. And I'm not going to diss anybody for their love of it. No, I understand. And I I really do get why people like Freddy. Because I feel like he has a charisma. And I also get why people like Nancy. Because I see how kick-ass she is. But I don't know. I just... Yeah. It it just didn't hit me as... I think especially, too, because last week we were like, whoa, Friday the 13th is, like, really good, actually. Yeah. And, it, and and so it just didn't have that same punch, I True. guess. True. I agree. Not that I should compare, but... How about Johnny Depp crop tops for... Is it called XX? Yeah, it's just called XX. I give it seven Johnny Depp crop tops. Okay. Yeah. My anticipation is a six and a half. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sounds good. <laughs> Meg, what's happening? Well, next um, week we're doing something exciting. Is it next week already? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to be at Supernatural Con, and we've done one of those before, and this is our, but this is our first one in Minneapolis, so that's We were in Houston last time, and the crowd was amazing, so thanks, Houston fans, because we had a great time out there. Yeah, it was really cool. Um, yeah, Supernatural Con, so that's exciting. And I'm back to work, (laughs) (laughs) y'all. And she's turned southern. I guess because I was talking about Houston. I don't know. My, yeah. You know, so so fun fact. My sister was born in Texas. Really. And she had a southern accent until she was like in elementary because she grew up, you know, with people speaking southern accents around her. Yeah. And she'd say cow, cow, and y'all. Oh, cute. And then she lost it when she got older. But yeah. You know, I had somebody tell me that I sound Canadian the other day. Oh. And it's funny because I think Canadians and Minnesotans kind of sound the same. Right. But when I get around 
my friends that are Canadian, I sound just 10 times more Canadian. So I wonder if your sister, even now, if she was, like, around Texans, if she would, like, you know, all of yeah. a sudden it would come out or Probably. something. Probably. Probably. Accents. Would, would Linguistics, it's so fascinating. Would Freddie be scarier if he said, hey, y'all? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kill y'all. <laughs> What's with the sweater? Just side note, why the sweater? And it is scary. There's something creepy about the sweater. Like, it's kind of like a Mr. Rogers sweater. My seventh grade math teacher had that sweater, and he wore it unironically. He was a scary person. (laughs) And people were like, oh, my God, you have him for math. Like, it was one of those situations. It was like, oh, not him. I won't say his name. But he was, he was like, the old school, you know, he was old and he was like, was he Freddy Krueger? He probably, well, that was the, that was the middle school, you know, joke because he literally had that same sweater that he would wear to school. I'm just wondering that choice. Like what, why is he wearing that sweater? I don't know. I did not wiki that character, (laughs) but should I Google it? And you guys can listen to me, Google it. No, just kidding. (laughs) But I am going to Google it for my own edification after this. (laughs) Hey, everybody have a good week and we'll see you in the horror section. Bye.